Hi, I'm Anthony Rahimnajad with Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Today I'm going to show you how to set up an SEL 2411P for our waste lift application. The SEL 2411P comes out of the box with powerful logic that allows you to set up all of the control from the front panel. It can be used for lift stations, well tank combos, and also remote pumping stations. The 2411P is easily integrated into existing or new SCADA systems and uses open, non-proprietary protocols to talk to those systems and allows for replacement of PLC or RTU as well as the pump control all in one box that's easy to configure. The first application we'll look at is a waste lift that uses only floats for level sensing. In order to access the settings in the 2411P, the first thing I'm going to do is press enter to get from the rotating display to the main menu. I'm going to scroll down on this main menu until I get to control. I'm going to press enter to go to the control menu. And then I'm going to select local bits by pressing enter once again. The first setting I'm going to look at is pump mode. Since this is a waste lift application, we're going to leave this set to pump down. And next I'll look at my level control. In this case, we're using floats instead of a pressure transducer. So I'm going to hit enter to access this setting and then I'm going to select float. I will press enter one more time and then the control will ask me to confirm that selection. I'll press this over arrow to select yes and press enter. Once I've changed that setting, I can see that it's been updated here on the LCD display. Next, I will press escape to get back up to my local bits menu and continue to scroll through and look at the other settings that I need to adjust. In this case, we're going to set number of floats to multi because we're using four floats. And we could also set this for a single float application. The next setting I'm going to scroll down to is phase monitor. In this case, we will have an external phase monitor connected to the 2411P to ensure that if we have a phase loss, we will not automatically run the pumps. So we want to make sure this is enabled. Next, we will look at alternation. By default, the control will alternate between the two motors after each run. Since this is a duplex application, we have a lead motor and a lag motor, and they will switch positions after the lead, each time the lead motor runs. If alternation is not desirable for a particular application, it can be disabled from this by selecting this setting. Next, I'll scroll down to the low float enable. By default, this is disabled, and since I only have four floats for this particular application, I'm going to leave it disabled. I'm going to check to make sure that my high float is enabled, and then I'm going to also make sure the lag two is disabled, but the lag two can be enabled for a triplex application. Next, I'll hit escape to back out to the control menu and scroll down to ACV and hit enter to enter my ACV menu. The first setting I'm going to look for, I'm going to scroll until I find minimum runtime. For my ACV settings, I'll press enter to view the setting and then enter again to change the setting. In order to change my ACV settings, I will need to enter a password. I'll use the menu to scroll through and enter the password for my control. Then I will, after the password has been entered, go up and click enter on accept and this will allow me to change my ACVs. Once the password has been entered, then I will be able to change the setting for other ACVs without having to re-enter the password. For all my ACV settings, if I want to view their present value, I'll hit enter to select that setting and I can see that my minimum runtime is set to zero seconds. If I wanted to change this setting, I would press enter once again and then scroll over to adjust the digits here and I could set a minimum run time and then press enter to confirm. Once I've confirmed my setting, I will hit escape to go back to the ACV menu. The next setting I will look for for this application is come up to my motor loss time. The 2411P is going to look for a feedback from the motor starter whenever it calls for a run. If the motor starter does not provide this feedback, the control will assume that the starter failed to start the motor and it will disable that motor for automatic control and will also uh, flag an alarm that can be sent back to SCADA. The next setting that I will look for is my lag start time. 
This is a useful setting for conditions where the lead motor is running, but it cannot keep up with the inflow. Instead of waiting for the lag ball to tip, we can set a timer that will start timing once the lead motor runs, and if it is not pumped down to the stop level within this amount of time, the lag motor will automatically run. That is all the settings that we need for our basic float application. Now, if we were to use a level transducer in this application, we would only need to add a few more settings in addition to these. I'll go back out to my control menu and go to local bits. Now, for using an analog pressure transducer, I will need to make sure that my level control is not set to floats, but is set to analog. I will confirm this setting. And I will also need to adjust one additional setting. I'll scroll down until I get to level transformer fail. And this setting allows me to fail over to floats if I have backup floats in the case of a failed level transducer. So for this example, we're going to have a pressure transducer and four backup floats. And so we want to make sure that if for some reason our pressure transducer fails, we are set up to fail over to floats. I'll hit escape to back out to my control menu and scroll down to ACV. And then once I enter my ACV menu, I'm going to scroll down and look for my stop level set point. The settings in the 2411P allow for us to set a stop, a start level, a lag, a lag to, a high level and a low level when using an analog level sensor. In this case, these levels can be scaled based on however we set up the scaling for our analog pressure transducer. The input can be either 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 10 volts and can be set in feet. In this case, it is set as a percentage of the tank from 0 to 100 percent, but there's no reason we can't set this for feet, PSI, or any other units that the end user needs for their application. After setting all of my stop, start, and lag levels, as well as a high level, I will be done with setting up this particular example for pressure transducer with backup floats. That concludes how to configure the SCL2411P for a basic waste lift station application. There's additional functionality that we did not cover today. For additional information, please visit our website at scl.inc.com. Thank you for watching.